Last night we had a fantastic game playing in the Dragons of Ice Spire Peak and I'm going to use some examples from our game last night to explain and express my thoughts about how you can avoid making the most boring character possible and how dynamic and interesting character choices make the game fun. So what am I talking about with dynamic and interesting versus like the ultimate boring character? Quite simply, when you're playing a role playing game, the, the number one thing you want to avoid is making a one dimensional character. Now, before I get into more detail about that, let me say this for you GMs. If you're running a game, it is perfectly fine to have an NPC that's one dimensional. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's going to make your it's going to make your time in the DM chair and your job running the game a lot easier. Because if you have a character that's flamboyant or you have a character that's gruff or you have a character that is uh, uh, irascible, irritable or excitable, for an NPC, it makes the game easy if you can latch onto that like sort of one fascinating trait. It makes it way easier for you to role play those NPCs. But that's for DMs. As a player, it's a completely different game. As a player, if you make that decision, if you choose something as your thing, then it becomes a sort of a shtick in the wrong way. You see, if you take something and make it so one-sided and one-dimensional that it becomes like cliche, it becomes boring. And one of the things I love about our Wednesday night games right now, and for that matter, the games I'm running as well uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, the players in those games are doing the same thing. One thing that makes a really good player character is having a dynamic character. Having a character that has different levels of emotion and shows that in the role playing in the game. If you play your character as very one dimensional and very one sided, like for instance, the, the easy ones to pick out are like the flamboyant fop. You know, some, someone who's always over the top. Oh, it's just, a, oh. Then it becomes a shtick. I mean, yeah, it's funny the first time, probably. And again, for an NPC, that could be funny. And it could be funny if you do that as a player, as long as you have moments where you're not that foppish buffoon, okay? And you where you take things seriously and maybe you're affected, maybe you cry or maybe you're, you know, angry or what have you and you show like a wide range of emotions. What I have found from this group is that every one of the characters Again, I've said it before. I've said this a couple times about this group. Every one of these characters leaves me feeling like at the end of a session or whatever, like I want to know more. I want to know more about these characters. Like, why are they that way? Why did they do that? Why did they say that? You know, it's blowing my mind. And I feel like what I, what I wanted to share today and why I, I'm talking about it today is because I feel like I realized that, oh, it's because they're all, you know, many layered. They all have these multiple dimensions of personality, even Cazador, even Cazador. Last night, this is probably what thrilled me the most because I was a part of it in the game, was that last night, we had an, a moment where, okay, so Kazador, she is reckless and she is, is charges into the combats and she runs off on her own and is doing things that is can be life threatening to her to her to the character, right? And I just I love the way Vla Valerie is playing Kazador because it fits, it makes a lot of sense. But last night we got to see a couple cool new dimensions about who this character is. One came sort of indirectly because uh, because 
we had Clay, who's playing Longtooth, have a moment with Cazador where he basically told Cazador, like, I like you, Cazador, and because I like you, your recklessness worries me. It, it does, and I'm using my words, but that's essentially what he's saying. He's like, I don't like how reckless you are. So you had this really kind of interestingly tender moment between arguably the two most stoic characters in the party and it was awesome and then later on so we we had a bunch of combat and it was the end of the day we were gonna we we're gonna have take a rest and we're at some we're at logging camp and Alum, my character i decided for Alum that she would sleep, she would spend the night, because she doesn't sleep, she would spend the night on the roof so she could keep an eye on the logging camp and, and keep an eye on her friends. And, and this, we found someone there, you know, a survivor, and so I wanted to make sure everybody was safe. And I thought, oh, I want to be outside under the stars. I don't feel like being in a log cabin. I'll stay on the roof. And Cazador said, you know what? That seems like a perfectly good place to stay. I'll do that as well. And so it provided this awesome opportunity for me as a loom to get some role playing in with Cazador. Before we got to that, I want to insert one other item is that we got to see because it was evening time and uh, Zook, so Aviad, who's playing Zook, asked for a moment before we kind of rolled forward to the next day, he asked for a moment for some role playing. And he and we had, he, so, so Zook and Jamril were, were decided to sleep in tents. And so, of course, Jamril being played by Ben, the two, these two players had their characters have a moment in the tent where uh, Zook sort of was, uh, something was on his mind because these the creatures we encountered stirred some uncomfortable, uncomfortable memories for him. And so here we have this awesome moment between these two buddies, right? These are the, for, in, in a sense, these were the, the two player, no, the two characters that brought the party together because Zook and Jamril found each other in Neverwinter and that's how this whole thing started. Once they kind of decided to help each other out, they found a loom on the way out of Neverwinter, brought her along to Phandalin, and then we connected with the other three members of our now six member party. So they had this really beautiful moment where Zook is sort of like, processing some uh, some guilt essentially some guilt about some things he has done in his past so we got this kind of cool reveal of course some of its player knowledge not character knowledge like right now technically Jamril's the only one that knows about this but Zook sort of confessed that he might have been responsible for something that's you know underhanded possibly or somebody could be could perceive it that way something that weighed on his conscious and it was awesome because here we've had Zook who's this kind of like bubbly and silly and you know like um, upbeat you know little gnome constantly inventing and tinkering and curious about everything and here we were with this moment of him being like really like calm and introspective and it was such a nice counterpoint and Jamril so Ben got to show Jamril as this like like genuinely caring person like you could just tell the way that Jamril was talking with Zook and the things that he expressed to Zook are the kind of things you would say to your best friend or, or at least to your good friend and it was so nice. So you had this beautiful kind of like intimate moment between two friends who have known each other for a little while. And then directly after that, we had this moment between Kazdor and, and Alum where Alum got to sort of pick Kazador's brain basically. Cause Kazador is this, so Alum and Kazador are the two females in the party, right? And Kazador is very like brash, brazen, and like tough as nails, right? She's a hard ass chick, which is awesome. And yet we got this moment with Kazador and Alum where I, we had a conversation and Alum was sort of not, not so much confiding in Kazador, but, but was seeking advice 
from Cazador because in Alum's mind, they're both sharing a somewhat similar experience. Cazador has left her tribe to go out to become strong so that she can go back and survive the world, you know, the, the scary, crazy out, you know, world out there, the dangers of life, and then come back to her tribe a stronger person worthy of, you know, carrying on the tradition, the tradition of the tribe. And here's a loom completely on the other side of the world from where she grew up. You know, she's from Karator, which is a complete, there's another continent on the world of Toril. She is like completely transported into this strange place with strange people trying to understand what's going on. And she misses her family. She hasn't seen her family in, in several years, about four years. And she's, she's a little homesick. There's some things that have been happening lately that have really like hurt her heart because you know, she, she nearly, they nearly killed this poor druid on the way to the logging cabin. And there's all this crazy, you know, the dragon and facing her fears and not understanding why she has these powers. And so there's all this stuff weighing on her uh, on her mind and her, her, you know, spirit, and here she sees this powerful woman who doesn't appear to be bothered by anything, and so she got the chance to like, say like, like, kind of like, how do you do it? Like, you know, you're away from your family, but do you miss them? And she's like, no, just be strong. And it was so, the way Casador, the way Valerie had Casador express these just like simple fundamental truths it, I, I took it Gregory as well as I, ha, I perceived as, that a loom would take this as like like just simple wisdom and and I'm, I got the chills right now talking about it because that's kind of how it affected me last night and and thinking about it again just reflecting on this moment between these two characters it was powerful and deep and again, it was like, it was intimate uh, and, and awesome. And, and it was, it was as a player, as a player who is getting more and more thrilled about uh, role playing over the years, I, it, it was delicious. It was just so wonderful to have these moments, A, to observe playing out between others and then B, to be a part of that. And so it, it, this session was amazing. We saw so many different levels of uh, pretty much all of the characters. We got to see where, you know, Longtooth has this sort of somewhat um, lighter hearted, uh, co comical, like he was being a little more jovial and so forth. So he's, it seems like He's so, slowly, which is great, he's slowly warming to the group, which is cool. And then there's Rathian. And, and, and I love the way Curtis is playing Rathian because Rathian is this like, this somewhat abrasive, you know, tough guy. But at the same time, you can tell because all the time, Rath or sorry, Rathian, Rathian, I apologize, Curtis. I'm probably screwing it up, but I apologize. So this character, Rathian, I think is supposed to be Rathian. So Rathian is, he, he is, ah, is it Rathian or Rathian? This is gonna drive me nuts now. All right, I'll figure it out and make sure I correct it on the vlog tomorrow. But anyway, the point is, this character is by no stretch one dimensional, right? We've seen all kinds of weird stuff going on with Rathian, but he still got this like suit of armor physically and literally that's kind of like keeping him at a distance from the party, which is very interesting. And I'm, I'm, I'm eager, again, when I say like at the end of the day, at the end of the session, I want more. Like this is the one, uh, one of the things I want more of. Like I want someone, one of us other five, to be able to sort of like crack the ice with Rathian because I wanna know like what happened? Why did he, why did he take, why is he on the path he's on he's an oath breaker and he saw corruption but like but what does that mean like, what did he really experience and why and and why is he somehow on one level he seems compassionate and understanding and on another level like absolutely zero tolerance for like 
cowardly acts to the point of like basically threatening people or or yeah i mean he <laughs> oh gosh it's like we we almost don't want to leave people some of the npcs alone with rafty and uh, for fear of what might happen in that exchange because yeah on a certain level rathian seems like he he has definitely got some hard lines and they will not be crossed and i i just want to know more I want to know more about all of these characters so none of them are boring because none of them are one dimensional and that's the whole point of this this today's vlog making a one dimensional character where there's no variation between their moods and their attitude it, it's the worst way to role play it might be a starting point you know okay this person's flamboyant sure okay great or oh this person's hard edge okay great but why but why and when are they not and what are the other aspects of their personality that you can bring to the table if you're not asking those questions, you're selling yourself short and you're limiting, I think, the amount of fun you can have role playing your characters. So there's so many other great uh, examples of phenomenal role playing out there, you know, critical role and so forth. But I'm just, I'm super grateful for this group and for this game because I'm getting to experience it firsthand. Thank you for letting me share that with you today and I'll keep rolling 20s and remember, it's your game, play your way.